So we're looking at the geometry review. Uh, we're going to look at uh, starting with cubes and cube roots. Uh, just a reminder that how we should really frame cubes and cube roots. So cubing something is, so cubing, going to the left here, is taking a length and converting it to volume. Cube rooting is taking the volume and converting it into length. So in this case, x would represent the length going this, sorry, the volume going this way. X in this case represents the length going this way. So the length, the length, when we cube it, we end up with volume. Okay, the volume when we cube root it, so when we that x represents the volume, we cube root volume, we end up with length. So make sure you have that kind of geometry in mind when we're th thinking about cubes and cube roots algebraically. So when we talk about the number line, we want to, we know that these are all cube roots. What we can say, the, the reasoning we can say is that the, if the volume is smaller, the lengths have to be smaller. So these cube roots all represent lengths. Inside represents the volumes of the cubes. So if we have a big cube, we're going to have a long length. If we have a short cube, we're going to have short length. So if I were to put them on a number line, the cube root of 5 should be smaller than the cube root of 27. That is a perfect cube, so we should know that that actually is equal to 3. We know that that should be smaller than the cube root of 81. The cube root of 81. Okay, that is not 9 because that's the square root of 81. We know that that's got to be smaller than the side length with a cube of 100 cubes. And we know that if we have 125 cubes, the side length is going to be 5. Okay, and it should be in that order on the number line. Okay, so again, if we, with squares and square roots, make sure we can put the length and areas into the right parts of the diagram. So the length is square root of 22 centimeters. Okay, so square root 22, that would be a length. That would make the area 22 centimeters squared. Okay, so that 22 on the inside represents an area. We square root it, we get length. Here, this 81 centimeters squared represents area. Okay, and then the side length would be the square root of this. So if I want to do that, I can do square root 81 centimeters squared, which we probably should write as 9 centimeters. Okay. So make sure we're able to put those into our diagram. Pythagoras, we need to make sure we understand Pythagoras. Pythagoras is the relationship between three areas, square areas off a right triangle. So if I have this big area, this smaller area, these two areas add up to that one, that means that to, to get the middle area, I need to subtract. So I do 121 minus uh, 36, I'm going to end up with 85 squares in here, 85 centimeters squared. And that does not talk about the lengths, that just talks about the three areas. Here we're talking about length. Okay. So if I want to work out the lengths, I can't add these lengths at all, that doesn't work. This length and this length do not add up to that length. However, this square area, 121 centimeters squared, in this square area, 104 centimeters squares. These squares add up to the big square, which ends up being 265 centimeters squares. Okay. I can then work out the unknown side length. I have an area to get the side length I square root. Okay. If I do that on my calculator, I get 265 square root. And the decimal value for that is 16.28. Okay, so that's approximately 16.28 centimeters. This is a better solution because that's an exact value solution. For here, again, we're going to use Pythagoras. So we're going to use this 9 square or 81 squares. We're going to use this 8 square, which is 64 squares. And we're going to get this big square. By adding those together, and I get 145 squares in here. So to find, go from the side area to the side length, I square root. So the number of 
the length of that side is the square root 145. Again, if we want a decimal value, I prefer the exact value, but the decimal value works out to be 12.04. Okay, so this length is approximately equal to 12.04. This one here uh, looks like there is a typo here, but let's change this to 3.2 and 4.0. Okay, otherwise it looks kind of weird. So I'm going to take, if I want to find this length, I'm going to find this square area. So I'm going to do 4.0 squared, and I'm going to take away 3.2 squared, and that's going to give me the x squared. So doing that on my calculator, 4.2 squared minus 3.2 squared gives me 5.76. Okay, so x squared equals 5.76. Okay, so that's how big this square is. So if I were to draw a square here, there's 5.76 units squared in there. But I want the side length. Okay, so this is, just zoom in a bit. 5.76 units squared, okay, that would be that square in here, and the side length is if I square root that value, and I get 2.4 as my side length. Okay? In fact, this happens to be exactly 2.4. Okay, so here, we need to make, again, make sure we understand how to draw nets and how to find surface areas. If I were to draw the net of a cube, okay, there's many nets I can draw. I'm just gonna draw the cross type one. The main thing is I need to have all six sides. And then if each side is 36, this is a six square. So six by six square. The surface area, 